I'm going to talk about uh, diagnosis and treatment of tick-borne diseases of livestock. So this table outlines the, the four most significant tick-borne diseases of livestock in the UK, and these will be covered in, in my presentation. Uh, the main livestock species that are affected are cattle and sheep, although other species can be affected, although uh, case numbers are usually relatively low or, or signs are minimal or absent. So what might be the first indication of a problem with tick-borne disease on in stock. Uh, it may be unexplained deaths, so this might be due to the tick-borne disease itself or secondary infections. It may be the specific signs, so nervous signs or red urine, although these can be due to, to other diseases. You may find evidence of ticks on animals that are showing signs, um, and the seasonality of cases may point towards a tick-borne disease, although mild winters are extending uh, the, the, the time of tick activity in the UK. So diagnostic options include post-mortem examination, so that allows visual examination of carcasses, but also a range of diagnostic sampling. And this might be carried out by, your, by a vet in practice, by APHA or SRUC diagnostic labs, or um, post-mortem providers such as the Wales Veterinary Science Centre or, or some of the veterinary schools. The other diagnostic route that, that could be used is blood sampling. The importance of diagnostic testing is ensuring that there's a correct diagnosis which allows correct treatment and management choices for, for the, the disease that's identified. It also ensures that you're confirming if other disease issues are, are present that also may need addressing. There are a range of diagnostic tests available from molecular tests that are looking for fragments of the organism involved to serological tests that are detecting antibodies. And the choice of diagnostic test is very much influenced by the samples that are available and, and the timing of the, the disease that's been investigated. There are several tests that are currently in development, uh, Babesia PCR, Liping Ill PCR, and Tick-Borne Fever Serology, which will all um, improve our diagnostic approaches to these diseases. So the next section is very much focused on the treatment and management of tick-borne diseases. And the impact of these tick-borne diseases are very much influenced by two main factors. So tick factors and host factors. Um, when you have larger numbers of ticks, there's a higher risk of tick-borne disease in stock. And uh, to give uh, an idea of what's considered a high number, more than 20 ticks on an untreated sheep are considered consistent with high tick numbers. Tick numbers can be influenced by environmental factors which have been discussed before, so type of foliage, uh, uh, rainfall and temperatures, and host factors also can in influence the, the uh, numbers of ticks. So that might be the availability of wildlife or livestock hosts. Host factors in particular can influence how uh, tick-borne diseases present in flocks and herds. And uh, that, that is contributed to by age factors, immunity of the stock, prior exposure to the, the infection, the scale of exposure to the tick-borne disease, but also can be influenced by the presence of, of concurrent infections. The management of tick-borne disease on farms is a balance of exposure to allow for immunity in those animals, but without causing disease. So to address uh, levels of tick-borne disease in livestock, one area that can be focused on to, to um, manage exposure is with tick control. Environmental control of ticks is limited on hill and uplands and well we can't can't control the weather so tick control needs to be focused on use of the caricides or, or tick treatments on the stock themselves. And you're looking at two main groups of chemical that can be used so that's organophosphates or 
the synthetic pyrethroids. The organophosphates uh, can be used as, as plunge dips for sheep and the synthetic pyrethroids are spot on or poor on uh, products. The choice of product is very much influenced by uh, what, it, what would fit with the, the management strategy for, for the individual farm, the age of animal that, that is being treated, and also the, the uh, timing of persistence for fitting in with times of, of handling of stock. So the first disease that, that I'm going to discuss is uh, tick-borne fever. Uh, which is caused by Anaplasma phagocytophilum, which is a, a, a bac bacterial-like organism. So as discussed before, you can see clinical issues in, involving fever, edema, respiratory signs and immunosuppression, and clinical issues are particularly encountered in lambs but can occur in naive sheep and some cattle. There is no protection from colostrum. Uh, immunity is uh, following exposure to the organism. After uh, exposure immunity, th this immunity can persist for several months or to more than one year. However, immunity rapidly wanes if it's not boosted with exposure. One area that has to be carefully managed is, is the timing of lamb exposure. Um, this is because lambs are particularly vulnerable to infection at between three and six weeks of age um, and exposure to ticks should ideally be out width of this window. Infection uh, is considered less severe in lambs of less than two weeks of age. Careful exposure of lambs is very much based around using topical tick products to manage tick burdens. So that can be using dips, botons or porons but it is important to check the data sheet for age and weight restrictions when using any of these products. Exposure of naive adult animals needs careful management. And again, this is largely focused around using a caricide, but also timing exposure of those animals to avoid peak tick times. Long acting op oxytetracycline can be used in very specific circumstances, but this should not be viewed as an option for large scale group treatment. There is a risk of abortion if pregnant animals are exposed to infection. Most infected animals do not need treatment. Clinical cases can recover after one week without treatment. However, if treatment is needed, short acting tetracyclines can be used for a five day course and some cattle in particular can need treatment. You can have persistently infected carriers after infection and even after treatment. With male animals, exposure is recommend, uh, recommended before 60 days prior to mating to avoid issues with subfertility. Other options for managing male animals is uh, purchasing pre-exposed animals or keeping male animals in in-by fields to avoid infection. Treatment for ticks is essential before male animals are turned out onto high risk areas. And this cow uh, had acute tick-borne fever that, uh, that required treatment. I should point out heavy tick burdens in themselves can result in anemia and also tick pyemia. So tick pyemia is where you have internal Staphylococcus aureus abscesses resulting from tick bites. And these, these uh, predominantly present with joint infections and can have spinal abscesses, although you, you can have abscessation throughout the internal organs. There is an increased risk of tick pyemia secondary to tick-borne fever infection and lambs of in excess of 12 weeks of age are at greatest risk. Tick pyemia can occur in adult sheep and there is a limited response to antibiotic treatment due to uh, the advanced stage of lesions by the time cases are identified. Bovine babesiosis, uh, um, so we have red cell breakdown, anemia, red urine and jaundice. Um, there is innate resistance to infection, as mentioned before, in calves of less than six months of age, but potentially up to nine or 12 months of age. And the resistance is potentially further enhanced by colostral protection. 
The process of resistance is uncertain, but it prevents clinical disease in calves, allowing good immunity to develop. Immunity in animals, however, needs managing as immunity can wane over several years, if not boosted with exposure. And patchy tick populations can result in some susceptible animals persisting on infected farms. Babesia can persist for up to two years in some animals and infection can be maintained in tick populations for at least four years, even with, without cattle uh, present. So treatment of Babesia um, is the only effective treatment for clinical cases is imidacarb dipropionate or imazole. And treatment is usually successful if given early enough. Advanced cases with severe anemia, you can consider blood transfusion. However, you need to also think about the implications for other infectious disease transfer when you're transferring biological material from one animal to another. Imazole can be used as a prophylactic or preventative treatment, and this is at twice the therapeutic dose. But please note, Imazole has long withdrawals. So 213 days meat withdrawal and 21 days milk withdrawal. And a part of the licensing for Imazole is that uh, its use must be reported to uh, the animal health section of APHA. Laupingil has the ability to infect a range of domestic animals, but is clinically most significant in sheep and to a lesser de degree cattle. It causes nervous signs and deaths and signs may occur 18 days after initial infection. Colostral antibodies protect for the two, first two to three months of life and managed exposure whilst animals are protected with colostral antibodies allows for, for safe development of immunity. Recently weaned lambs are the most susceptible to, to disease. Natural infection results in lifelong immunity and risk levels on pasture for lauping ill can be assessed using a high risk threshold of greater than 20 ticks on an untreated sheep or a lauping ill prevalence of in excess of 10%, which is important as losses can be high in naive animals with high levels of exposure. Please also note there is a risk to, of human infection from exposure to blood and, and tissue fluids during post-mortem examination. So when introducing stock and managing their immunity on an endemic farm, you could consider checking for prior exposure or immunity to uh, the relevant tick-borne disease with uh, consulting previous owners or using serology where, where applicable. Use of a carocyte until immunity has been allowed to develop is important and regular reapplication to uh, control tick numbers. For sheep, mixing, dipping and topical pyrethroids can be used to reduce the risk of tick resistance to treatments and immunity can wane if not regularly, uh, if animals aren't regularly exposed, exposed to some of these infections. So possible future advances include breeding of stock for tick and tick-borne disease resistance, development of tick vaccines, and development of tick-borne disease vaccines, and in particular, the Lauping, Lauping Ill vaccine, but possibly also uh, Babesia divergence vaccines. So that's the bovine babesiosis. There are other useful sources of information include a table of topical acaricides on the SCOP site, which is listed under blowfly treatments. And there's also pasture management in information available at the websites for Natural England, Natural Resources Wales and Nature Scott.